Hey all, here are OS Reviews. You're watching our hands-on review of the Anika T8. This is called a mini card phone, and it's one of those extremely slim feature phones. It's really basic and pretty much only makes phone calls. Could be an interesting backup phone though, just something to have in winning emergencies, and also could be a companion phone because of how cheap it is. And this one does have built-in Bluetooth, so it can connect to your regular smartphone if you want to, and it becomes kind of like a detached smartwatch. It will give you notifications when a call is coming in. You can answer it on something that's a little bit smaller. Uh, you can also use it as a remote to control the music on your phone. And you can pop in a SIM card, of course, the T8 itself to make it a detached uh, secondary phone. But it does have a color 1.54 inch display. And uh, you can access some basic functions on it, including a music player, uh, FM radio, basic tools, things like that. It claims I can also act as a music player, and it supports a micro SD card up to 32 gigabytes, which is interesting, and it comes in a few different colors. Now the design is really trying to imitate the iPhone 6 or 7 or 8. You can see there is kind of a round button that is similar to the Touch ID key on iPhones, so it's trying to seem a bit more polished and expensive than the price, which is only around $30, is trying to suggest. So really ultra cheap and low cost, comes in a few different variants, and it does have 2.5D curved glass on here. So the build quality should be decent, but again, it's not a touchscreen. It is very slim though, 4.6 millimeters, and here are the dazzling colors that you can pick from. Now technically the T8 does use a MediaTek chipset, but it's clocked at only around 100 megahertz or so, uh, because again, it's not running on a really advanced OS. We just have the phone right on top. Accessories include a micro USB cable for charging up the phone, and uh, we also have a pair of headphones, but it's included because it's proprietary. It needs to use a micro USB to the headphones. Basically that's because the phone is so slim, it doesn't have enough space for a standard 3.5 millimeter jack. They also give you another screen protector that you can apply in addition to a quick user manual documented in Chinese as well as in English and also a SIM ejector tool. So taking a closer look at the design and hardware first, as the name implies, this is a ultra mini phone. It is surprisingly lightweight, but also feels more solid than only a $35 price would suggest. It really is made out of uh, tempered glass, not plastic, on both the rear as well as on the front. The only issue is it's a huge fingerprint magnet. It doesn't have a anti-fingerprint layer on it, so it does attract smudges really easily. And on the front, it really does look like a tiny iPhone with its earpiece, its darkened glass to hide the display as well as the uh, keypad underneath, which you can make out when it's turned on. Here they are next to some Apple AirPods, so basically the height of two AirPods stacked on top of each other, and obviously much thinner, next to a standard US quarter. You can see the difference there as well. Finally, just for fun, we have an iPhone. This is a plus-sized iPhone, a 6 or 7 Plus, and you can see the huge difference there in terms of size, almost comical. Otherwise, the frame is constructed out of a chrome material that's actually aluminum or metal, so it does feel, again, pretty solid, just very, very shiny. And then on the other side, we have access to a SIM card slash micro SD card tray. The battery, of course, is integrated and non-removable. The bottom features the microphone and the micro USB port for charging. So here's the boot up sequence, and when the lights go down, that's when you can really tell that it's definitely not an iPhone or even uh, that close of an iPhone clone, which of course it's not, it's just inspired by it in terms of the outer shape. Uh, but you can see the screen here is actually surprisingly bright. Now it's not exactly an OLED panel, but you can see the contrast between the background and the text is actually quite good. And all the keys are backlit, so it looks very cool in the dark. And it is touch sensitive, just like on a touch screen. So the lightest taps will register, uh, but unlike a real D-pad that you have from buttons like on the Xiaomi Qin, it doesn't have really tactile sensation. Now taking a closer look at its uh, features, if we tap on the menu here, it starts off as call logs. I can swipe down to take a look at my contacts, once more for messaging, once more for ebook, but again, Reading back books on such a tiny 1.5 inch screen is not going to be super enjoyable, but you are able to do things like take a look at quick notes and whatnot. Down below there's access to WhatsApp, but uh, it's not really the full version of WhatsApp. It actually uses the web browser to take you into www.web.whatsapp.com. So there is a very basic built-in web browser on this thing, believe it or not, powered by that uh, pretty small 100 megahertz uh, MediaTek processor. 
There is no built-in Wi-Fi though, so basically it's relying on your cell plan to access that. It also can be, you know, of course, accessed like any other web browser to other pages. You can access different bookmarks um, and you can render the pages in different ways. So there are some settings that you can fiddle around with, but this is by no means a very uh, powerful browser, but it is present, just is a throwback to the days where kind of dumb phones had those uh, relatively entry-level uh, browsers that you could use to do things like uh, take a look at weather and news, and that's pretty much it. Same thing goes with Facebook. Mobile.facebook.com is what it tries to take you to. And then down below here we have MP3, so Axe is a very basic music player. Also have additional settings like changing the equalizer, shapes the sound a little bit depending on the genre, jazz, rock, classic, so on and so forth, so you can change that. There's also Bluetooth mode where you can connect to Bluetooth earphones or headphones and it will play it back on those wireless buds, um, which is pretty nice. So it acts as both a Bluetooth receiver and also a transmitter. If it's uh, connecting to a phone as a companion device itself or connecting to headphones to play back the music. So you have some options there. And again, you can use an SD card to expand the memory because by default there is barely any storage. You really need an SD card if you want to listen to music. Now the FM radio on here also requires the headphones to act as the antenna, but it is functional and you can find a few channels nearby. Under settings, we can take a look at things like display, we can change the brightness, when to lock things. Um, the kind of UI here is for the most part pretty fluid. It is for the most part I think similar to other MediaTek based systems that I've seen, it's actually a little bit reminiscent of some MediaTek powered smartwatches that we've reviewed in the past. It looks a little bit familiar in terms of the text and the orange font, uh, so that's going to be interesting. So similar to basically a smartwatch, but in a phone form factor. So everything that we see from the SD card can also be accessed and played back. Now in tools, we have some very basic utilities, things like a calendar, although there's no way to add appointments or alarms. Uh, but it's kind of cool actually how small the display here. It's uh, very interesting to look at. There's also an alarm clock, uh, again, really similar to a smartwatch screen, around 1.5 inches squished into this size, but surprisingly sharp because of how small it is. Um, there's also a very basic calculator that uses a d-pad, basic sound recorder or voice recorder that you can use to capture some quick memos with using the microphone. That works all right, not too many surprises there. And there's also what's called a Bluetooth phone. So this is uh, the menu that you use to basically connect to your smartphone. Now battery life and performance is decent. Um, it will last you through at least two to three days before you need to really recharge it again. One thing I will say though is because this is such a basic phone, all you're doing is basically making phone calls as well as uh, perhaps occasional text messages. So it only supports 2G bands. Um, so Again, if you're using the browser to access Facebook or WhatsApp, that's going to be a little bit slow. You can use the arrow keys on the main screen to access some features as a quick launch shortcut. So you can tap on the right and by default it goes into profiles. You can turn the phone into silent mode for instance if you're in a meeting. I can tap on the left to take a look at my messaging to very quickly type out text messages. Now I can tap on the bottom here and that will take me to the mp3 player as a shortcut. I tap on the top to go back into pairing with your smartphone. As far as being a dedicated phone is concerned, in terms of a 2G bands if you're using it with T-Mobile, it works all right. Here in the Seattle region I was able to get a decent amount of uh, bars of reception, about two to three bars, and I could still make phone calls without too many problems. The microphones does sound a little bit on the tinny side, especially if you're outdoors in crowded spaces. It does tend to get a little bit muffled, so not the cleanest sound in the world, but still is decent enough. And if you are indoors, it is still very easy to recognize and hear. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Annika T8. Obviously this is more of a novelty item, it's not something to be taken, again, super seriously, um, but it is an interesting little backup phone for only $30. It has pretty good construction quality, it has a surprisingly sharp screen even though it is very small, and it's kind of cool in terms of how retro and throwback it is. But uh, pretty cute and interesting maybe conversation starter or gift idea if you want to um, take a look at something a little unusual and quirky. That's been the Annika T8 mini card phone that's in the style of a mini iPhone.